Hello friends, welcome to the new episode of Backside Story, new post. Debunking most common medical myths. Number three is the best. Supposing is good, but finding out is better. Mark Twain. Have you ever considered the idea of life without research? Our modern life is made possible because of various advents of scientific discoveries. Research is crucial and serves as a catalyst for solving complex issues. I've always loved science and inquiry. That obviously explains my predilection for medicine. Medicine is a scientific discipline. Despite the rigor of research-based practice and evidence-based medicine, some medical myths continue to percolate the system. Although there aren't too many, but certainly I have encountered a few ill-informed pure medical dogmas. The very first question is, why do myths persist? In today's world of logic and reasoning, folklores and urban legends surprisingly continue to endure. Lack of verification in no way diminishes their appeal. Although there can be many theories to explain the continuing viability of medical myths, few that come to my mind are cultural relevance, case reports, physiologic assumptions, or just tradition. Traditions can be quite powerful. As Grace McGarvey puts it, tradition is an explanation of acting without thinking. So today I'm going to debunk three medical myths that I have most frequently encountered in my clinical practice. Myth number one. Fish oil, which contains omega-3 fatty acids, lowers the risk of heart disease. Although use of fish oil for reasons such as lowering triglyceride levels has been suggested, using over-the-counter fish oil can carry some risks. But the very first question, does over-the-counter fish oil reduces one's risk of heart attacks? It has been considered that the use of N3 polyunsaturated fatty acids derived from fish may reduce the risk of heart attacks due to their beneficial effect on reducing inflammatory and clotting or thrombotic processes. Now, let's look at the research data. A 2013 study published in New England Journal of Medicine enrolled 12,500 patients to receive fish oil capsule or placebo. At the end of five years of follow-up, there was no difference, yes, there was no difference in the occurrence of heart disease-related mortality or morbidity between the two groups. Thus, the usefulness of a fish oil supplement should be carefully reviewed with one's physician on a case-to-case -case basis. Myth number two. Docusate is a great treatment for constipation. Also known as colase, docusate over-the-counter is one of the most commonly used agents for constipation relief. It is inexpensive, readily available, and easy to use. But does it do the trick? Research data. In 2014, Canadian Agency for Drugs and Technologies in Health synthesized all published data on docusate in a clinical effectiveness paper. The conclusion was that docusate is no more effective than placebo in the prevention or treatment of constipation. Thus, when it comes to treating constipation, I always recommend proven therapies such as psyllium husk or polyethylene glycol. Myth number three. Medications cannot be used past their expiration date. The expiry date on drugs is the date when the manufacturer still guarantees 90% potency. For-profit pharma companies would obviously have very little motivation to extend it. Now let's look at some of the research related to this subject. 
data from the Shelf Life Extension Program, also known as SLEP, have been assessed to provide reliable information to address this issue. The Food and Drug Administration of the USA, or known as FDA, have administered the SLEP program for the United States Department of Defense for 20 years. The study, published in May 2006, demonstrated that 88% of the 122 drugs that were studied had retained 90% of their potency beyond one year past the expiry date with an average extension of about 66 months, which is almost five years past the expiry date. The SLEP data thus supported the claim that many drug products, if stored appropriately, can be extended past the expiration date. In this era of information outburst, I often desire to put this warning in my office. Patients will be charged extra for annoying the doctor for any mythical diagnosis or facts gotten off the internet. Finally, G.B. Shaw summarizes it well. Beware of false knowledge. It is more dangerous than ignorance. How did you find this post? Was it helpful? Do you have any medical dogmas or beliefs that you seek to be clarified? As I strive for continuous improvement, I sincerely call upon you to please subscribe, share, comment and advise. Thank you very much for listening. Keep smiling.